5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. This show is 5.45 Live. Coming up tonight, Vermont Nets, $21.6 million. We'll talk about that. Uh, there's an assault at Leland and Gray um, as well, and we'll uh, see Bernie on the Edge show as well. All that and more, and we do it all in 15 minutes, so make sure you stick with us here on 5.45 Live. <laughs> Obamacare is what they call it. They all talk about repealing it. Tonight, the president made it very clear that he doesn't want to go back. How important was was that to make sure that, look, we've come this far, we're not turning around? Ed, let's be clear. Uh, we've had a dysfunctional health care system. 50 million Americans, no health insurance. Millions more who are underinsured, high premiums, high deductibles, 45,000 people dying every single year because they don't get to a doctor on time. What do the Republicans have to say about health care? Vermont uh, U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders on the intro talking about uh, quote unquote Obamacare. Uh, of course, the uh, State of the Union address uh, among the many things, including the gap between the rich and the poor, and of course, health care on there as well. And Bernie Sanders getting worked up in the most uh, constructive of ways, as he always does. Welcome back to this January 25th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy. We get quite a show. Uh, we'll throw in some uh, traffic, weather, and ski updates in there as well. But we'll launch right into it. Uh, Joe, there are a few things here uh, in this town, as of late, uh, less hotly contested than the skate park, less of a, a buzz. Um, maybe I can just do this. Is, uh, you've been actively involved in this. Maybe I, I can start, uh, start this one off with you here. I need to be careful what I say on this one, as always. As with all these today. Um, um, uh, news today is the, the uh, judge, Judge Thomas Walsh, has ordered the skate park group back to mediation, or so as the headline reads on the uh, Brattleboro Reformer today. Uh, my recollection of it is it's a little bit more like, uh, I believe, the, uh, the opposing side, the appealing side, is the one that are, is being ordered back to uh, uh, mediation. The um, uh, basic group never really left the table. They... Uh, I've uh, been willing to negotiate and mediate from the beginning, and uh, they're still willing to negotiate, and I'm sure they're looking forward to uh, resolving the issues uh, that are uh, uh, before them and uh, moving forward with the project so they can get on with their fundraising and uh, hopefully uh, bring a skate park to Brattleboro. And the judge was uh, pretty straightforward, pretty succinct um, when he said, quote, the parties need to mediate. This is a second opportunity. Uh, again, Judge Thomas Walsh is the environmental court judge involved in this case. As we get more, we'll uh, let you know. All right, let's see. What do we got next, Joe, as I check my super fancy uh, sticky notes here, post-it notes? Teleprompter Pretty notes. Pretty much as good as a teleprompter. Um, all right, uh, again, tough news to, to do. Um, aggravated assault at Leland and Gray is uh, one of the latest headlines. Um, it's being investigated by the Vermont State Police. Um, including uh, Trooper Kurt um, Wagenbach, and uh, according to uh, reports anyway, uh, William J. Clayton, who's uh, 17 years old, uh, struck another student in uh, a school bathroom. Um, and uh, there we've got a couple quotes from that, including the Vermont State Police Trooper, who uh, told the reformer that, uh, quote, the victim looked as though he had a large dent in the left side of his face where he had been hit. Um, when asked about it, uh, Leland Gray Principal Dorian Dorfman said, uh, quote, Two boys had been involved in a fight. However, only one boy did the hitting. Uh, more to come on that as we find out more there as well. All right, Joe, moving on. Uh, we got to uh, jump into the government. Uh, it's uh, raking in big bucks, um, or at least as far as my wallet goes, it's big bucks. But in the wake of uh, Hurricane Irene's damage, it may not... Uh, they may not be rolling in it quite as much. 21.6 million is the latest number in federal aid for uh, disaster relief coming into this here state of Vermont. Um, thanks to Governor Shumlin and his uh, media team, they've posted on his Facebook page uh, the latest uh, comments on this uh, money coming in, including uh, Speaker of the House Shap Smith, who said this. The importance of this money is the flexibility that it comes with uh, because we can run it through the community development uh, grant program, uh, we are able to put it towards affordable housing, towards economic development, and community infrastructure. Speaker of the House, Shep Smith, uh, talking about um, 
the uh, latest round of money from uh, the federal government to help with Irene relief. Of course, uh, the price tag that just as we kept hearing over and over again, Joe, the price tag was going up and up, went from about half a billion to a billion to 1.5 billion. They don't exactly know, but the latest numbers are closer to two billion. So, right. anyway, this is a little bit. Every uh, 20 million helps, right? Yeah. <laughs> throw it in the uh, the. The piggy bank there. Throwing dollars in the bucket, right? There we go. Yeah. All right, uh, before we jump into our weather traffic fun like that, Joe, uh, West River Park, can I turn you loose on this one? Well, we can take a little bit of that from the news today also. Uh, West River Park is certainly uh, anxious for spring to arrive. I know they're trying to uh, kick it up in their fundraising campaigns. Uh, according to Paul Freed, the hardest thing is just being patient. Uh, uh, as he said to the reformer, uh, from the start, we told ourselves that we would not rush this and that we wanted to do it right, and uh, do it right they are. Uh, I know that phase one has been completed last year, and that they're looking forward to phase two and three upcoming here, and uh, the fundraising campaign is uh, is uh, going into overdrive here as spring approaches, and uh, they're, they're, I, I understand they're anxious to be, uh, I think, starting to play in this fall, uh, hopefully. So um, uh, you can contact Parks and Rec, 254-5808. Yeah, to make a donation or uh, look on the town website for more information. All right, next, uh, thanks to Gary Blomgren, who runs BHS TV, uh, uh, high school basketball games are now being broadcast live on BC TV, both on Channel 8 and Channel 10. Last night we had another game. Uh, it was the girls taking on, uh, I believe, Hartford. Uh, no uh, Cinderella story win for them last night, but they did have some incredible plays, uh, including this little give and go I was very impressed with. Oh, between the legs, what a feed. Cut into the hoop, that's how you do it. Uh, now, um, you can uh, find this game. There was another boys game uh, last week also, um, and those went up on video on demand at brattlebrotv.org. You can watch them in their entirety. The next live game. Did, did you watch some of the game? Yeah. Yeah, I watched some of it too. It was good. They're running a two camera shot there, and uh, whoever is uh, running the mixer there, whatever, they're doing good. It's yep. it really pretty good coverage. They've got some great integrated graphics as well. Um, and let's see, when's the next game? 7-15, uh, this coming Tuesday, the 31st. Uh, the boys are taking on Burn Burton. Should be a good game. That's what everybody's saying anyway. Um, so tune that in again, 715, uh, BCTV, Channel 10, two clicks up the dial if you want to tune that in live. And if you can't, for some reason, check in live. It'll uh, be replayed all throughout the week and, of course, be on that video on demand we keep talking about. All right, Joe, uh, that's about all I got for stories. So I uh, want to jump into uh, a couple of my new favorite things. Of course, we're um, on our own doing a weather report while BUHS TV gears up for their new semester. Um, but we'll just uh, quickly give it the rundown on the week here. Maybe I can uh, just turn this Super. loose on you here. Just do our, our basic uh, update. As you can see, we've got it up on the TV here behind us on our fancy new screen. From what I gather in the next 36 hours, it looks like towards tomorrow evening into uh, Friday morning, we're looking at some freezing rain and ice as we uh, come into the morning drive time there on Friday. Uh, other than that, uh, partly cloudy on Saturday, um, a high uh, still above freezing. Uh, looks like pretty much for the next uh, 10 days we're looking at a, high, a daytime high above freezing with the exception of Monday it'll be at 30 but outside of that we're well above freezing and uh, down into the teens and mid 20s during the night and uh, looks like a chance of snow showers on Sunday chance of showers next Thursday but other than that fairly clear enjoy the weather uh, while it's uh, while it's cooperating all uh, right next uh, here's the the fun part our uh, high-tech traffic report here. Joe, the code, as you know, but maybe some viewers don't know out there, we've got uh, three colors to work with. Red, standstill traffic. Orange is heavy volume, but it is moving, and green is good to go. Let's uh, break down a little bit uh, the, the numbers <laughs> here, or the colors here. We've got uh, we brutal red, strip of red northbound yeah. and southbound today between High Street and Malfunction Junction. Western Ave and Canal Street are also uh, heavy volume. And then uh, if you're coming down Putney Road, uh, coming south, you're looking at heavy volume. But it looks like uh, people heading up Putney Road uh, out towards Putney uh, going north are good in, to go. That's accurate right there, too, because I just came in from West Brattleboro, mm -hmm. and it was, it was bumper to bumper coming in through there. Yep. Uh, 91 traffickers are good to go as they often are. And if you're headed out toward Keene, um, you're looking at some uh, heavy volume. But if you're coming in to Brattleboro from Keene, you are good to go. That's our traffic report powered by Inrix and Beat the Traffic. All right, uh, just a few more things before we wrap up. Joe, thanks for uh, sticking with me here on the show, uh, joining me at the desk again. 
Uh, remember, we'll be back Friday. We're we'll pull out Fernica. all the stops, more interviews, uh, more local news. We'll try and do a remote Skype in as well as we happen to do on Friday. We're kicking off our new ski report. All that and more comes up this Friday. Again, tune us in right here on Channel 8 at 5.45 p.m. or find it up online uh, at 7.30 p.m. on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, um, or on BCTV's website, brattleboro.tv.org. That's all searchable under 5.45 Live and Brattleboro Community Television. Before we go, a couple notes here. Um, uh, Memorial Park Ski Lift is open 3 to 9 tomorrow, and the Wyndham Orchestra is playing the Bellas Falls Opera House. That's uh, Friday at 7.30 p.m. when they kick off. And if you're tuning into BCTV at 8 p.m. tonight, right here on Channel 8, you can watch the Austin School versus Black River High uh, boys basketball game. And two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Uh, catch a 6 p.m. showing in just a matter of minutes um, with Jim Condos' new piece, How State Government Works, uh, from Secretary of State there. All right, Joe, that's about all I got here, so I'm going to say what I always say, which is for BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, and we're saying night, everybody. <laughs>